JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 29th. I am Harald Amos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other uh, major currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It gained against JPY, GBP and slightly against the Swiss franc while it underperformed versus the Aussie, the Canadian dollar and the New Zealand dollar in that order. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the euro. Now the weakening of the yen and the strengthening of the commodity linked Aussie, CAD and NZD suggest uh, that the investors may have continued trading in a risk on mood yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European and US indices were a sea of green with the upbeat morale rolling into the Asian session today. European shares moved further off uh, their latest lows, perhaps due to the better than expected earnings results from firms including Total Energies and Volvo Car with upbeat earnings perhaps being the driver behind Wall Street's rally as well. Meta, Meta Platforms, the Facebook parent, surged 17.6% after it reported a larger than expected profit and a rebound in users. At this point though, it is worth mentioning that in extended trade, Amazon tumbled around 10% after it estimated quarter two sales below the market consensus. In any case, this was not enough to change the upbeat the up uh, morale which rolled over into the Asian session today. Besides upbeat earnings, another uh, reason uh, for uh, keep buying stocks in Asia may have been the Bank of Japan's willingness to defend its ultra-loose policy. Remember that yesterday's de at, at yesterday's decision, officials of this bank said that they will offer to buy unlimited amounts of 10-year government bonds to defend an implicit 0.25% cap around their zero target every day. This put at rest uh, rumors that uh, the bank may proceed with hoggish tweaks around uh, its yield curve control policy. <clears throat> now, having said all that though, despite the rebound in equities, we still believe that this recovery may be limited. After all, the developments uh, which resulted in the latest slide are still there. The war in Ukraine is still raging and it, it could ca still have uh, more economic uh, effects. China is adopting even more, even stricter uh, policies to combat the coronavirus, which adds to concerns over its own economic performance, while the Fed is expected to proceed with aggressive tightening in the months to come in order to curb very high inflation. Even after the US GDP data showed that the economy contracted by 1.4% quarter over quarter quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate, missing estimates of a slowdown to 1.1 from 6.9, investors remained, remained convinced that the Fed will proceed with a 50 basis points hike next week and perhaps with a triple one in June. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, uh, a double hike for next week is fully priced in, while the probability for a triple one in June has actually risen to 84.1%. All this suggests that the US dollar may continue to benefit, especially against the Japanese yen, due to the very wide monetary policy divergence between the Bank of Japan and the Fed. It could also keep outperforming the euro due to the ECB adopting a more cautious stance uh, with regards to monetary policy, but we will discuss the euro and the ECB uh, in a while. 
Now, another currency which we expect to perform very well is the Canadian dollar. Remember that at its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada hiked by 50 basis points and Governor uh, Macklem uh, stressed uh, the need for higher rates and also added that they are prepared to move more aggressively if the situation weren't so. So, besides a higher, uh, besides a higher dollar yen and a lower euro dollar, we also see the case for a higher cut yen and a lower euro cut. Now back to the euro and the ECB. Today the main releases may be, may be Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for April and the first estimate of the blocks, uh, of the blocks GDP for, uh, for the first quarter. With regards to the CPIs, the headline rate is forecast to have ticked up to 7.5% year over year from 7.4%, but the HICP excluding energy and food is expected to have inched up to 3.4% from 3.2%. The preliminary GDP rate is forecast to have held steady at 0.3% quarter over quarter. Now, with Russia's decision to halt gas supplies to Bulgaria and Poland, there have been some fears over the future economic performance in Europe. <coughs> excuse me, which in turn, <coughs> excuse me, which in turn may have raised speculation that the ECB may need to move more cautiously in terms of monetary policy. However. Further acceleration in Eurozone inflation may revive speculation that the ECB may eventually need to lift rates in July. However, even if this is the case, the increasing expectations over an ultra-aggressive stance by the Fed still point to, to a divergence between those two central banks. And thus, we still see the path of least resistance for Euro, for Euro dollar as being to the downside. So. That's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye. Have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.